Hello. In our previous training video, we scheduled a session for my student Robin. It is now time for her session. Robin has logged in using her username and password. You see her name and her avatar appear at the right hand corner of the screen. This number indicates the number of reward points she currently has earned. On the left hand side of the screen, you see the games that she will play during today's session. When we click on each game, you see the data changes on the right-hand side of the screen. This tells us how she did the last time she played motor skills, her averages over time, as well as her highest achievements for this game. Scrolling down a bit further, we see her behavior progress. The default is engages in nervous habits because today's objective is to decrease nervous habits. If I want to look at different behaviors, I can click the down arrow. I can also view behavior, behavior progress over time or I can look at it per game. Scrolling down a bit further, we see the journal. This is what she entered in her journal the last time she did a play attention session. This is a good opportunity for you to review how your student did the last time she played, what she learned, what she's proud of, and sheer genius auto-populates what needs to be improved. The distraction level simply tells us the environment in which she was working the last time she played. The coach inputs this information at the end of the session. The last play attention session was done in an environment at a medium distraction level. When Robin is ready to get started, she can click the Games tab at the very top of the screen or simply click Let's Play. Let's go ahead and click Let's Play. Here are her games for this session. You notice that two of the games have locks on them. This is because we chose to do an ordered session. This means Robin must play motor skills first. Once that game is completed, then the lock will disappear from short-term memory and she can move on to that activity. Below the game, you see how she performed the last time she played this game. At the top of the screen, you see today's behavioral objective. Once you've reviewed the behavioral objective and the last game played, Robin's ready to begin. Let's go ahead and play motor skills. You see there's no game goal today. If there was a game goal, it would be stated here. Robin's going to go ahead and click play and play motor skills. Once Robin has completed motor skills, we will see the behavior rating scale. As coach, I have kept track of the number of times each behavior was observed during the game. I made note of this on the session rating scale dry erase board that came with play attention. I take the numbers from my board and input them here. I can use the slider or I can simply type in the number of times the behavior was observed. You notice that her targeted behaviors are shown. Today's behavioral objective is highlighted in orange. If I need to input data for other behaviors, I can select show all behaviors. And I can input information for the other behaviors. Once I've completed inputting her behavior data for this game, I can click Submit. Robin did not have a goal today, so it simply says that she did not have a goal for this game today. I click Go to Current Results. We can now view how Robin did today. She completed motor skills with 68% attention. This means that she was paying attention 68% of the time. She played this game for 5 minutes and 26 seconds. She only completed 93% of the task, so the game was not completed. 
We can also view her behavior graph for this game. The chart again defaults to today's behavioral objective. We can scroll down to view data from previous sessions. Since we've completed motor skills, let's go back to the game screen. You see we played motor skills so it has a check mark and the lock is now gone from short-term memory so we can now go ahead and click short-term memory. We will play the two remaining games and then see what comes up at the end of the session. Robin has completed all three games that were scheduled for today's session. We are now back at the game screen. You see there is a check mark on each game because she has completed each one. If we scroll down, we can see the data for each game. Since she has completed all three games scheduled for today, Sheer Genius now displays the other games available to her in her game list. If we have extra time and Robin would like to play an additional game today, she can do that now. She can play as many bonus games as she would like. If we are done with today's session, Robin can scroll up to the top of the screen, click the down arrow, and then select Log Out. She completed her behavior goal, so she receives a big congratulations. Fantastic job. The distraction level I will fill out as coach. This is simply a record of today's room environment. We had very few distractions in the room today, so I'm going to select low. We recommend in early sessions you try to eliminate as many environmental distractions as possible. However, as your student improves, you will want to start adding more visual and auditory distractions into the room. This will allow your student time to practice paying attention while filtering out distractions. Below is the journal. We do encourage you to use the journal. Have your student reflect what I've learned, what I'm proud of, and type those responses here. What I need to improve is auto-populated by sheer genius. I have a couple of different logout options. I can select close session and log out or simply log out. If I select close and log out, that means the session is officially over and I cannot log back into this particular session. If I select log out, I will have a short window of time where I can log back in and continue this session. Robin is definitely done with this session today, so she selects close session and log out. Are you sure you want to close the session? Yes. That concludes our student session. We'll see you next time.